One of the main reasons that we like to monitor the benthic communities and the fish assemblages is that we're trying to use them to get a finger of the pulse of what's going on with the marine or aquatic environment within the park boundary. Marine fish come in every color of the rainbow and practically every shape and size you can imagine. Some swim together, forming groups called schools. Others are solitary and prefer to live alone. Some are skittish and easily scared, while others are seemingly indifferent to what transpires around them. There are fish that prefer the night and those that prefer the day. Some fish roam far and wide, while others prefer to stay in one place. But as beautiful or peculiar as these animals may be, they are all of immense importance to people. We talk about global climate change or overfishing or nearshore development. These are all real close to home here because each one of these parks is situated in an area that's very special and has something unique about it in terms of the marine resources. In the Pacific Islands, fishing is a way of life, but our marine fish are critically important to the coral reef systems in which they live, filling several important roles. There are fish that are grazers, keeping the algae from overgrowing the corals that make up the reef. Cleaning fish serve to remove parasites from the bodies of other fish. Predatory fish such as jacks, groupers, and sharks typically eat sick and wounded individuals, thereby keeping the overall fish populations healthy. In remote and pristine ecosystems, large predatory fish are common. However, the opposite is true for waters close to population centers. Modern fishing pressure throws off the predator-prey balance that marine ecosystems depend on. The National Park Service's Pacific Island Inventory and Monitoring Network has recognized the critical importance that marine fish play in our ecosystems. Monitoring of marine fish is occurring in four national parks in the Pacific Islands. Or in the Pacific National Historical Park on Guam, where there are over 1,100 species of fish, the National Park of American Samoa, whose waters contain over 900 fish species, and in Hawaii in Kalaupapa National Historical Park on Molokai, and Kolokohono Kohau National Historical Park on Hawaii Island, each with over 400 species of fish. One of the, the principal goals of our inventory and monitoring program is to really try and detect when these changes occur so that we can then start strategizing about particular management activities that we can undertake. While conducting marine fish monitoring, a National Park Service scientist dives down and swims along a transect at 30 different locations in the park. While we're down at the bottom using scuba gear, we also take measurements on the fish. And we run what are called transects, which are these parallel lines, parallel to shore that is, about 25 meters in length, where we're documenting the number of fish that we see, the types of fish we see, and the size of each one of the fish. And this way we can kind of get a sense of what the fish community is like, again, at that point in time. And by taking the repeated measurements, we can really see whether the community is improving or declining. So what you're really trying to do is capture at that moment in time, when you first enter into the water, what the fish assemblage is like. Using this information, park scientists are able to determine if there are changes that are taking place in park fish populations and enabling them to understand how significant these changes are to the reef. Through concerted efforts like these and careful monitoring of fishing practices, these beautiful living resources can continue swimming long into the future.